In the last two transfer windows, Chelsea have spent a lot. They are comfortably the biggest spenders in the Premier League, with transfers totalling 611.5 million euros. And to put that in perspective, that's more than every Bundesliga team put together in the same time period. So, while there is a reported strategy behind this spending, it's clearly a risky one. The full picture won't be clear until next year's financial results are out, but the club's recently released 21-22 accounts do shed some light on those potential risks. So what are they? Chelsea reported revenues of £481 million in 2022, a club record. But they also reported the second lowest profits in the league, with a loss before tax of £121 million. And that is including the £123 million of profit on player sales. Exclude that and other exceptional items, and you'd see an operating loss of £224 million. This is comfortably the lowest in the league, and for context, the second lowest loss is Everton's at £92 million. So, let's look at the key line items in the accounts one by one, starting with revenue. Chelsea's revenue growth of about 8% in the last three years is healthy on the face of it, but what's worrying is that it's all come from broadcasting income, with matchday income and commercial revenue pretty much flat. The growth in broadcasting revenue was largely driven by Chelsea's performances in the Champions League, including of course their win, and then victories in the Club World Cup and the Super Cup. Chelsea's UEFA coefficient is currently high because they won the tournament recently, meaning that they do get a disproportionate share of Champions League TV money. However, performances in the league this season have been abject, and it's mathematically impossible for Chelsea to finish in the top four. In fact, there is a very real possibility that Chelsea will not play in any European competition next season, and that would significantly impact their broadcasting revenue. For context, Chelsea earned about £92 million in European TV money in 21-22, about 40% of total broadcasting revenue. It will be critical for Chelsea to find alternate sources of revenue next season. So next, let's address the elephant in the room, the transfer spending. Transfer accounting has lately become synonymous with two words, amortisation and impairment. Player amortisation is the practice of dividing a transfer fee over the duration of the player's contract and thereby reducing the amount booked in the profit and loss accounts of a club in a particular season. Player impairment is the accounting practice of writing off some of the remaining value in the player's contract in any given year, thereby reducing the amortisation charge on that player in future seasons. As an example, if a player was signed on a four-year contract for £40 million, the amortisation charge would be £10 million per year. But if after year two, the club wrote off £10 million of the remaining contract value, which would have been £20 million at that point, then the book value would change to £10 million from £20 million, and the amortisation charge in years three and four would be £5 million each year. Obviously, in both cases, ultimately the entire transfer fee of £40 million does have to be expensed. Impairment and amortisation are simply accounting solves to optimise the timing of that expense. So why is this important for Chelsea? Well, firstly, Chelsea's annual player amortisation charge is already the highest in the Premier League, at £160 million. This is before accounting for the new Todd Bowley signings. So the club knows that amortisation will go up given the creative and very expensive way in which they've signed players on high fees and long-term contracts. Therefore, they've taken on a huge player impairment charge this season and written off contract values of some players currently on the books. Player impairment went up to £77 million in 21-22 for Chelsea, which is the highest ever for any Premier League club in any season by a distance. The second highest is Stoke City in 2019-20 at £43 million. Now, this isn't a great sign of things to come. On a positive note though, Chelsea's £123 million profit from player sales is comfortably the highest in the league in 2022 and is indicative of a very strong youth academy. It's expected that Chelsea will continue to leverage player trading to offset losses, as it's been consistently important financially for the last five years. A couple of other noteworthy items include wages and money spent on managerial changes. Chelsea have a wage to revenue ratio of 71%, the highest of the traditional big six, which could become a big problem if European TV money is impacted. It's therefore more than likely that the squad might need trimming by the new manager. Chelsea also spent £45 million on managerial changes recently, which will reflect in next year's financials. £10 million to pay off Thomas Tuchel, £21.5 million to Brighton to secure Graham Potter, and ultimately £13 million as a payoff to Potter. 
Needless to say, Chelsea would benefit financially if they got their next managerial appointment right. So, what does this all mean? Well, Chelsea's reliance on broadcasting revenue, combined with precarious levels of transfer spending and a high wage bill, are all portents of an ominous future. Of course, things could turn around, with the right manager coming in, taking the right decisions with the squad and finding winning form. But the strategy so far has been extremely high risk, with limited to no reward. Todd Bowley and the team will definitely be hoping for happier days to come. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.